Hi everyone, today we will be going to discuss the easy assignment solutions from 1 to 15 and this is the first question and actually the problem happened is I forgot to add uh, record the voice so I am voice overing to this my video uh, so the first question we are uh, there is three part there is a for the first question and uh, the first one is they are asked to find the V1 and V2 uh, so we can uh, see from the figure that the slope is changing from 1000 to 100 So you can use the slope method and find v1 and v2 Which will be showing this in uh, in the next time few time In the second part, uh, we are using the concept that the actually it is a closed loop gain is a divided by 1 plus a beta. So uh, it is in the question given that it is 10. So a uh, we can write a divided by 1 plus a times beta as 1 divided by 1 by a plus beta. So for uh, and beta is constant, which you, for a circuit we everyone know that. So for remaining uh, for and keeping that uh, 1 divided by 1 plus a times plus beta as constant we should neglect 1 by a so assuming that 1 by a is less than beta we can so that uh, closed loop gain only depend upon beta and the closed loop gain is given as 10 so we can draw the graph and take the v1 and v2 that's the concept that's the assumption we are using 1 by a is very small The second question is the RC phase shift oscillator and the uh, we can first draw that circuit so drawing that one we can separate this uh, two part as op amp related part and the uh, CR RC sections first we can draw the RC sections and uh, that is the beta part of our network because this is con uh, connected from the V out to V in, right? So that is the beta part of the network. Other part we are considering as the closed loop gain of the op amp, that is A. Basically A is the open loop op amp, but here we are considering as that part of the op amp. So it is closed loop gain. Yeah, this is the closed loop gain of the op amp. And uh, the loop gain of this, closed loop gain of this op amp because this op amp is in the inverting configuration so we know the closed loop gain is minus rf by r1 and that part just you leave now now we are uh, taking the transfer function of this rc sections so the part we are connecting from v in uh, to the input v in that we are noting as v in 
and the part we are com uh, coming outside from this v out is v o dash which is clearly mentioned in the figure and uh, the next we know that v out equal to minus r of by r1 into v in this is clear because the op amp is in the inverting configuration so it is very clear that and this is not the part we are required we are we need to find the beta network yeah the beta network we need to find so we can just copy that one and just we can paste this one uh, to our secure uh. and the problem is if we are considering this rc section as separate sections we know that uh, the we can just multiply the uh, rc uh, constants uh, if we are considering it as separate but uh, just bit b c r i'll come to that point that's grounded yeah let's suppose assume that we are considering the high pass just leave that the other circuit just this concept assume that this one uh, no uh, just uh, uh, just we can consider the low pass uh, here it is it is easy to deal with the low pass so funds consider the low pass instead of r and c and what are the transfer function of this circuit it is v0 by v in is nothing but 1 by r plus 1 by rcs so if we are cascading this three uh, circuit we can just multiply that that's right but that can't be done because the same amount of current is not flowing from first cascading circuit to the second one the same amount of current is not flowing through that one so that's the issue that is known as the loading issue so here in this circuit also we should consider the loading issue if the loading issue is not there we can write 1 plus r by rcs in volt cube but loading issue is there that's the problem with loading issue so we need to find the current separately and want to find the uh, like want to find the transfer function and uh, so far uh, considering the uh, transfer function uh, we are considering the current flowing through that i1 into i2 i3 v1 v2 v3 and just we are relating this uh, currents uh, to that one So the current I3 is nothing but or the first we want to relate V0 our aim is to relate uh, V0 V0 dash to V in. So first we are converting the circuit to the Laplace domain. So instead of capacitor it is 1 by Cs. Okay. So V2 minus V in equal to 1 by Cs into I3 according to KVL. So first the aim is to relate V2 to the V in and we later we will relate v1 to v2 after that we will relate v output to the v in so uh, you can find out that uh, the output we are connecting this uh, v input to the op amp right so current do not flow through that path because current do not enter to the op amp so complete i3 is flowing through r resistor so i3 is nothing but v in by r so that's the idea to the op amp current do not flows the complete current will flow through the i3 complete current will flow through the r resistor so i3 is nothing but v in by r then we can i2 is nothing but v2 uh, uh, minus 0 by r plus i3 so we should relate all this and find out the transfer function
so now we got the transfer function v out by v in and everything we got and uh, yeah now we are uh, writing this v out is equal to from this non-inverting configuration so minus rf by r1 is equal to we are replacing this s to the j omega so j omega rc like a square and everything we are replacing to the lab, uh, j omega and now we are equating the real components and the imaginary components so that we get the omega and R, rf by r1 ratio Yeah, we are dealing with third question. So it is a Wien's bridge oscillator. First, we are doing without Wien's bridge, uh, like without the limiter case, the only the uh, that one, that part. And uh, just redraw that circuit. So here the same step we are doing uh, like in, we do in the second question uh, like we are separating the amplifier section and the beta network uh, amplifier section is pretty clear that it is in the non-inverting -invert, non -inverting configuration the op amp uh, amplification will be 1 plus rf by r2 and just draw the beta network now and we can see the poles now so the main concept we are using here uh, is analyzing beta network so we can draw the beta network separately that is the v in of to the op amp and the other one is the v out so we are doing the laplace domain uh, now we are relating v in and v zero just so we can assume that the one by cs and r is in the uh, series configuration other in the parallel so according to uh, voltage divider rule we can relate v in and v out
so uh, this will be the our transfer function to the our uh, for our beta network and uh, for we know that uh, the contribution from the op amp is it is in the non inverting configuration so v out is nothing but 1 plus rf by rf or the gain is nothing but 1 plus rf by r so the loop gain is nothing but t equal to a times beta and that is 1 plus rf by r1 into v0 uh, cs and this uh, 1 plus rcs whole square plus rcs Uh, there is slight correction is there uh, this will be our uh, one more slight correction is there actually the beta uh, is v in or the whatever the uh, from the output comes to the input v in by v0 that is our beta so uh, v0 should be avoided from the loop, uh, loop, total loop gain configuration or the total loop gain equation so that uh, beta will be we getting okay so beta is nothing but v in by v out so that should be, we need to avoid v0 from the equation to get the loop gain now we are using the barkhausen criteria so that loop gain should be equal to 1 for oscillating so we know all the values of rf r1 ca and everything we can substitute everything and make a contrary equation and solve for the values of s so it will be uh, like uh, make satisfying that equation that values will be the poles for the beans bridge oscillator
so this will be our equation if you solve for this you can get uh, you type in the calculator you can get this answer as 10 to the power 5 16 0 0.0015 plus 0 minus j this will be our answer so the main criteria we used in this part is the Barkoshin criteria that is a times beta e should be 1 so the next part of the circuit is just find the if and we everyone know that means bridge from the theory means bridge uh, frequency is 1 by rc just substitute the values you can get the frequency as 1 kilohertz So the next part of the circuit is limiting, amplifier limiting is there. The additional thing there is nothing but D1 and D2 diodes are there. So uh, the idea we, I do is nothing but VP and I related VP and V0 uh, at oscillating v frequency. So first we can look that what happens at VC, VP, VP and V in. So, uh, so we don't know that VP and VO. We earlier uh, written that equation uh, for uh, while analyzing the beta and we wrote that equation V in is nothing but uh, V zero RCS divided by one plus RCS volt square plus RCS. Instead of V in, it is VP now. So, uh, la yes, like whenever that diode will be D one is on that R4 will be comes in parallel with R2 uh, so that amplifier will be uh, like RF that uh, that two resistor will come in parallel and it will be reducing that and uh, our total amplification will reduce so that is how it is amplifier amplification limiting limiting the amplification similar in the case of D2 when D2 comes in contact RF will be coming in contact with uh, parallel with R2 so that that resistor will reduce so that amplification we control can control in the negative input also so that's why we are coding amplification limiting uh, limiters limiters that's the concept so uh, just we are writing the vp is nothing but v uh, output rcs divided by 1 plus rcs the whole square uh, plus rcs that's the equation uh, like uh, like we are do uh, checking at the part this wheels uh, bridge oscillator will be oscillating at a particular frequency omega is equal to 1 by rcs so what happens to vp at that point that's we are checking so instead of s we are substituting j omega and putting the condition omega is equal to 1 by rc or omega rc is equal to 1 that is the oscillating frequency we can see that clearly at oscillating frequency the output or the voltage at the positive terminal will be 1 by third of the output that is very important it's to be interesting right that while the wind spirit is starts oscillating at a particular frequency the voltage at positive terminal will be the 1 by third of the output that's to be noted
now uh, for the diode to be on we uh, it's required that v0 by 3 should be greater than the nodal voltage v a uh, should be greater than 0 0.7 the difference should be greater than 0 0.7 then only the diode will be on that is the condition so writing that condition first we need to find the voltage 3k 1k and the 15 voltage and the v output um, so for finding that nodal voltage va we can use the current equation and we can find the water voltage and just put the condition that uh, like for to be the diode to be on the difference between the voltage should be greater than 0 0.7 and we uh, just uh, solve for v0 that will be the peak to peak voltages no that will be the maximum voltage then find peak to the peak just by multiplying two So in this circuit, like for uh, for the question, there is a transfer function given directly. Just draw the body plots, and uh, just uh, take the divisions as ten and draw the body plots, and keep remember of the poles.
So up to 5 into 10 to the power 5, 100 dB is there because it is clear clearly given that when we put, uh, put f is equal to 0 in the transfer function, 10 to the power 5. So 10, 20 log 10 to the power 10, uh, 10 to the power 5 is nothing but 100 dB. That is the frequency. After that, minus 20 dB will be there. Minus 20 dB per decade means per 10 times increase in frequency, 20 dB decrease will be there. But actually, how much uh, uh, frequency is decrement, increment is there? 1.5 times that is 1 and the other is 5 1.5 into 20 that is 30 db decrease will be there 100 to 70 that much decrease will be there and after that pole it is minus 40 db that will be again 40 into 1.5 60 then 10 db decrease will be there so that will be continuing Uh, related to angles in the poles uh, like here the pole let the poles be at 10 to the power 5 if the pole is at 10 to the power 5 at 10 to the power 4 the contribution from the pole to angle is 0 at 10 to the power 5 it is 45 at 10 to the power 6 it is 90 degree from a single pole contribution so it will be uh, for each poles this contribution will be there that be, uh, for 1 by 10 the decrease in the frequency is zero contribution at the pole 45 degree contribution at 10 times increase it is 90 degree contribution so individual contribution from all the poles should be added uh, like from the uh, successive manner to get the angles that is the idea we are using here in this question it is clearly given that 60 degree phase shift should be there that is how that is means the gain should cross before getting 60 uh, like uh, it will be coming now like uh, the gain uh, the gain or the body plot should cross the x axis at 120 degree so that there will be a phase shift of 60 degree that is the idea so the first idea we should find the point where it reaches the 120 degree so we can uh, for a transfer function is given we can write the angle equation take tan inverse and we can put uh, frequency randomly like we can uh, just see that it is 0 45 135 and just this 180 will be there at 10 to the power 8 and we can note that 120 will be somehow between 10 to the power 7 and 10 to the power 8 yeah so it should cross at be uh, some 60 degree should be free from that point from the frequency uh, gain crossing that point so that we will get a phase shift of 60 degree that's the idea which means it should cross at some angle 120 that's the angle so the primary aim is our we should find the 120 at what frequency 120 we will get so our hand there the transfer function is there just we can substitute some uh, uh, random values which we we know that anyway it is 10 to the power 7 and 10 to the 6 and 10 to the power 7 uh, like 10 to the power 7 and 10 to the power 8 it's uh, 120 is there just put some random values and find at what and i am getting that 7 into 10 to the power 7 we are getting 120 degree angle so uh, we get got that angle and we uh, the question is asking now to shift the first pole so let the first pole be x and uh, let's
so we got the transfer function and let the first pole be x uh, and we have an idea that this transfer function will cross x axis at 7 into 10 to the power 7 that's the idea only we have so which cross means the gain at that particular frequency is nothing but 0 db which means in the magnitude it is 1 so you can put that uh, frequency is 7 into 10 to the power 7 and gain as 1 uh, so you can get the value of that new polar 70 hertz that's the idea So in the question number 5, it's given that there is a pole at, at 1 megahertz and the uh, DC gain is 100 dB. So the, after that, minus 20 dB will be there. And we are, they are asked to introduce a one pole so that uh, gain at 10 to the power 6 will be 20 dB. So some pole, after that, it will reach as minus 20 dB, which means, say 20 dB, which means from 100 dB to 20 dB, there is a decrease, which means 80 dB, there is a decrease. We know that per decade it is decreasing 20 times. 20 times it decreases there. So how much time? 4 decades should be there. Which means 10 to the power 6, the first double pole should be at what? 10 to the power 100. So 10 to the power 2. So 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 3, 20 dB will decrease. 10 to the power 3 to 4, under 20, under 20, under 20. So it should take 10 to the power 4 uh, uh, times should be there for decreasing to from 100 to uh, 20. That's the idea.
in the second part there uh, it's given that there we required a phase shift so for getting a phase shift what's the idea uh, after anyway there one pole is there second pole is there so 10 to the power 7 uh, 180 degrees there so uh, our gain for getting a 45 degree phase shift the gain shift or the gain pole, body plot should cross the x axis at 10 to the power 6 so that we can get a uh, phase shift of 45 degree okay so for, for getting that one 100 to 0 degree uh, 100 db to 0 db there should be a decrease so we can relate the same idea whatever we used earlier uh, from 10 to the power 6 to the 10 to the power 5 times de times decrease it should be there which means the new dominant pole is at uh, 10 hertz The last part of the uh, like uh, fifth question, uh, there is no much difference is there. Actually, uh, B part it is given that instead of one megahertz, ten megahertz. So actually, what difference will be there? Instead of ten to the power six, ten to the power seven, ten to the uh, new dominant pole will be at ten to the power three. That's the only the difference. Actually, they are asking us to without uh, like without pole, just use the capacitor adjusting the capacitor so according to the miller theory for introducing a pole or for introducing a new dominant pole we should decrease the frequency by 10 to the power 3 so according to miller theory omega is inversely proportional to c so in for lowering the uh, frequency thousand times we should increase the capacitance by the factor of thousands that's the idea So in the question number 6a, there is VTC is given and, and it is minus yeah, 5 volt. So first, the what I, I, I use is like just reconstruct that line. Just reconstruct that line and write the equation for that line by using one point slope form. And there is a point, there is a slope given. So y is equal to minus 1 times x plus 5. That is the equation for that line. If the line continues for minus infinity to plus infinity, that is the equation of line. So v is equal to, v is equal to minus v in minus 5. So uh, the idea is that if we use some uh, equations or functions, just to make we are able to make this transfer function and or this equation and use half a rectifier will be able to uh, what uh, will be able to use this one so uh, or just the reverse idea first the half a rectifier and we need to shift this one so either either among this idea you can use so, so first we are supplying the v input and some functions um, so that output of this box will be minus v in minus 5 and then we are using some halfway rectifiers uh, so that we only get the positive output okay now that's the idea so uh, like before we are getting that halfway rectifier they will introduce a 
you can see from the theory of the hardware rectifier there is a negative sign in the hardware rectifier so already there is negative we needed and we are getting again negative from the hardware rectifier so so it will be output will be just what we can say v in plus 5 so it's better to avoid uh, whatever the customized function we make earlier negative we can avoid that so from the hardware rectifier anyway negative will be there from the hardware rectifier that will be balanced so uh, our functions or the customized function whatever the circuit we are making that should produce v in plus 5 only instead of minus v in plus 5 so uh, we can use a positive summer uh, instead of negative summer we can use the uh, positive summer and we can input v in and 5 so that applying the uh, like superposition theorem we can get short circuit 5 volt we can get v by 2 short circuiting v in voltage we can get 5 by 2 at that point and the gain will be 1 plus 1k by 1k that will be 2 so uh, the output will be v in plus 5 after that just use a half wire rectifier we will get the desired output so uh, this is the b part it's just the window detector window detector circuit everyone knows that just two op amp is there and here two volt and four volt and b in so at uh, the btc will looks like two volt between two and vo four volt op amp will give positive saturation other times it will gives the negative saturation that's the idea so Uh, you know to create a window detector at two to four. So what you should do for minus two to four? Just repeat the circuit, and come couple that you can get the uh, window detector from two to four. So how it's working window detector? Uh, like 
you can guess that if it's one volt uh just wait uh yeah yeah if it is one volt then uh, the lower op amp will be uh lower op amp yeah lower op amp will be in the 1 volt and is 2 volt lower op amp will be in negative saturation minus 12 and minus 12 will be given through a resistor to the positive power supply of the first op amp which means that op amp won't on because op amp will be on it when we get positive and minus 12 plus and minus 12 but it's not on so first op amp won't on so your output will be negative saturation if it's getting 3 means both op amp will be on and effectively you will get a 12 volt as output so that's how video detector is working so you can couple two circuits to get the output So it's the seventh question A part. The circuit is somewhat only the complicated part is means there is a two center diodes which is connected in the opposite sense. That's part if that part is not there means just the op amp in the non inverting configuration. So there are two. So first we need to study the characteristics of the center diode. Later we can go to the sub details of the circuit. So what is center diode? Uh, center diode means you uh, can draw that one yeah yeah so first we are going to the characteristic of center diode center diode when it is the positive forward bias it will just behave as a normal diode which means knee voltage will be 0 0.7 just the uh, normal diode that uh, IV characteristic will be same. But in the reverse, uh, the all the characteristics for a seminar diode depends upon the reverse uh, bias. So while during the reverse bias, there will be sharp up to a reverse breakdown voltage, the current will be zero. Which means that through that path current will not flow. After a particular reaching a point, the current will start rising at particular that voltage that voltage is known as center voltage so you can know that up to that point there is no problem which means that uh, that 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 part of the circuit now we can just rub that because current do not flow through that path is just open circuited before getting to that voltage after that reaching voltage the center diodes will come to the act come to the come to play that one so that's the idea. So we will analyze that one. So there is two diodes, center diodes, D1 and D2. And like this is a V in. Yeah. So when V in is positive, the diode D1 is forward bias and D2 is reverse biased okay so uh, we know that it is in the uh, negative feedback is there so zero volt will be at the negative terminal and what will be that uh, V out yeah V out will be we are applying the KVL and V out will be V out plus because we are moving from the negative term negative to the positive of D2 so plus VD2 plus VD1 equal to 0 
it is not minus d1 it is plus d1 because we are moving from the lower voltage to the higher voltage of d2 and of same of that of the d1 so it is plus d1 and v0 is nothing but v minus of vd1 plus vd2 so this condition is only applied when one of the reverse uh, bias center is reverse bias like before getting like the just the breakdown voltage is just assume that it is minus 8 so before getting to minus 8 current won't flow through that path just you can rub that part means uh, it's only a uh, uh, open that is in the inverting configuration after getting to that point v out will be it is equal to minus of vd plus vz that's the idea so equal to zero after getting that breakdown then only v out will be minus v minus of vz plus vd1 so it is uh, not minus vd1 okay it is plus vd1 Actually, there is a problem it's plus v d1 yeah so v0 equal to minus of v z plus v d1 so this will be the limiting case before getting a breakdown there is no issues because that part of the circuit won't exist after breaking down this will happen v0 will be minus of vz plus vd1 actually what is vz and vd1 vd1 is the breakdown voltage and v d is nothing but just the knee voltage 0 0.7 so when it uh, v in is negative the first diode d1 will be reverse bias and the posted will be forward bias and you can do the same steps for finding what is the case of v in So first we are, I told that before getting to the breakdown voltage, current won't flow through that path. Just means you can rub that part of that circuit. And the remaining part is just the non-inverting -inver configuration op amp. What is the inverting configuration op amp slope? Minus Rf by R1. Just you can draw a slide with a negative slope. This is the condition only valid up to breakdown voltage. Just a line. After getting to the breakdown voltage and when Vn is positive, the uh, op amp, the voltage will touch. The voltage will be what? Minus of Vz plus Vd1. When the voltage is positive and the voltage is negative. So the op amp will saturate at that voltage. Beyond that voltage, bond degrees. That is the idea. Yeah, the second part is nothing but we are doing the same steps we done in the Wien's bridge oscillator case. There is two diodes and from you can see that from the positive uh, sense there is two resistors and you can find the voltages at VP by either by superposition theorem. If superposition theorem means uh, not only means you can use the current method. The main idea is that current do not flow through the positive terminal of that op amp. So you can use either of this, uh, either superposition theorem or just the uh, like current method. And uh, uh, there is negative feedback exist from this op amp uh, so that uh, V in will be equal to V positive and you can apply that condition v, v, v in equal to Vp and just apply the condition for diode switching uh, like uh, 
the VP is nothing but 2 by 3 VI and 1 by 3 V0 and that same voltage will be available at negative terminal of the op amp so uh, yeah either you can use the superposition theorem to find VP if it's not there means you can use just like the uh, current method just like two resistors you can use and find the uh, like two resistors and the other part of the resistor is connected to V0 and this is the input voltage this is the 10 kilo ohm and the 20 kilo ohm yeah that is the I current you can find the find the nodal, nodal voltage from there or you can go with superposition theorem and this uh, you can apply uh, the condition for D1 switching on So the condition for D1 to switch on is nothing but 2 by 3 VI plus 1 by 3 V0 should be greater than minus 4.5 V0 by 2. 4.5 V0 is by 2 is the no, that voltage, the diode connected voltage, right? The diode is connected to a point. So 1K, 1K, both resistors are equal. So whatever the voltage across the two resistors, it mean will be available at that node. Uh, so for D1 to be turned on, the difference of the voltage should be greater than 0 0.7 or at least 0 0.7. You can apply that condition and get the VTC. So for uh, uh, rearranging, after rearranging, for uh, greater than 5.2, you will get a line equation. After less than 5.2, you will get a line equation. So there is a condition when D1 and D2 are off. And that time condition, you can get post saturation from the op-amp. So please note that case also.
now the eighth question the uh, eighth question we need to create this signal uh, so it's uh, this is light trick i used uh, like you can create a square wave of two times the time period of that one like this signal no this can, uh, it's not mm, yeah this one and yeah so uh, just a normal square wave of time it is given 250 in the question but we are creating time of 500 microseconds okay this is first we will create and later so it's of time 2t that means 500 microseconds later uh, we will be using some mechanism so that half the time we will be allowed to pass this signal half the time we will be short circuiting to zero ground half the time uh, allowed to pass this signal half the time it will be off such a switching technique we will be using so that switching technique is uh, like just shown by this wave the wave we are like we are drawing now yeah so uh, there we are implementing some technique so that uh, when the second wave is off we will be allowed to pass through the circuit the multi, uh, like the square wave we drawn earlier uh, yeah and for the next half time it will be zero short circuited just we will repeat this one then we can get the uh, wave equation or the wave uh, which is desired in the question You can see that half the time it will be on, half the time it will be short circuited. Then next to the half circle it will be on again. Then it will be short circuited. So some switching technique needed there. For that we will be using a switching and the multi vibrator output. Uh, you can use the multi vibrator uh, equations and create the multi vibrator of time period which is 500 microseconds into two. Uh, that is one millisecond. Uh, no. Uh, yeah uh, one millisec like it is given 250 time period uh, so it is double of that one 500 uh, actually there is a slight uh, mistake in that uh, we are writing half time period is a 500 uh, but i later i converted 250 actually the time period should be 500 because we are constructing a, a square wave of 500 only because uh, twice of that we needed then we are using the principle of short circuiting uh, so i am later i am i go on with 250 that is a slight mistake you should go with 500 and you should design some multi vibrator to create a uh, like time period t half is 500 microseconds and time period is 1 millisecond later i am changing this uh, in the same video i am changing to 250 please avoid that you should continue with the 500 microseconds and the time period as 1 millisecond
so in this question is very clear that vtc is a circle which means the circle equation is v in square plus v out square is phi square so our output is somewhat phi side if we are create to able to create the output as something in terms of cos when we square and add we'll able to get this equation that's our out that's our idea so we can use either a practical differentiator or the integrator to achieve this one i am now going with the practical integrator there's no issues with other also if we square means that we will get the, the same uh yeah so uh, we are going with the practical integrator so practical integrator is shown in the figure the voltage gain of the practical integrator is r f by r into 1 divided by root of 1 plus f a f by f a volt square that is the practical gain of the gain of the practical integrator gain means the voltage that coefficient of that wave anyway phi, input is phi sin uh, that one and output is phi cos uh, no phi it is phi cos into something when we integrate divided by something 2 pi into 10 to the power 3t that is magnitude is actually the gain so the concept is nothing but uh, here we should get 5 which means uh, there should not be gain actually whatever i did after integrating we something will be coming the uh, before cos term something will be coming right that is actually gain we can uh, means calculate it directly without any uh, without the help of with the help of equation that is rf by ro into 1 plus R, uh, root of f 1 plus fa by f uh, f by f a in volt square so how to get that equation it's very clear that just draw that practical integrator just uh, find the uh, uh, just convert to laplace domain and find the relation between v in and v out and just take the out uh, magnitude of that one so that we can get the relation that is the voltage gain so here we the voltage gain the output we should get as phi cos itself which means the voltage gain should be 1 so a should be 1 and you can put some random values for the c and rf so that you can get uh, frequency is given 10 to the power 3 so at the frequency 10 to the power 3 you should get gain as 1 you can put random values for c and rf and get the values of r that's the idea that's up to you
so 14th question we are using uh, like they told to create a uh, smith trigger so that at top upper threshold voltage when it reaches it will be go to ne- reverse saturation negative saturation and when it reaches the low, uh, lower threshold it should go to the positive saturation so uh, consider uh, it's told that input is a sine wave for volt peak to peak and when it reaches the zero point minus 0.2 volt it should go to positive saturation and when it reaches zero it should go to negative saturation that is very clear from this output and the question is asked to find the time duration for the positive and negative okay so the concept we are using is uh, that's the uh, time duration we are asked to find anyway the co- uh, sine wave is given as uh, like how much uh, 1 kilohertz which means the time period is 1 millisecond half the time is 0.5 milliseconds so the time taken from 0 to uh, minus 0.2 volt if we are able to get that time we can subtract from 0.5 just that time to get the positive saturation uh, positive saturation and you can see that the other time also it's 0.5 millisecond <coughs> yeah it's 0.5 um, it's just 0.5 millisecond so if you are uh, so for look at the po- negative saturation negative saturation babe so if you are able to find from the add that time taken from 0 to 0.52 minus 0.2 that time to this to 0.5 uh, we are able to add means we can get the time duration for that uh, negative saturation so the ultimate aim is to find the time taken from 0 to cross minus 0.2 volt and the input is nothing but is just a side wave of amplitude uh, 2 peak to peak is for amplitude is 2 so our uh, input wave is just 2 sine theta yeah let input is nothing but uh, just the 4 volt peak to peak so amplitude is nothing but 2 2 volt and and just nothing but we can write 2 actually I forgot there 2 just write 2 also okay 2 uh, is just 2 okay uh, just minus 2 sin theta I forgot that minus 2 sin theta is equal to minus 0.2 theta is equal to sin inverse 0.1 I forgot that one just not that one okay uh, theta is equal to sin inverse 0.1 that is 1 0.1 radians okay just calculate that one so theta is equal to omega t and omega is equal to frequency everything given you can calculate the time period so many of the students may have doubt why i write uh, just 2 sin pi plus theta like just 2 is there okay i forgot just consider 2 2 sin pi plus theta why i written pi there actually the aim is to find the time taken by the wave to cross 0 to the minus 0.2 volt so the initial or the reference is what 0 volt so by that time when the sine wave reaches 0 the phase covered by the sine wave is pi that's the reference is considered as pi so we should consider that many of them may have doubt okay that's why pi plus theta be given so you can get the time and just add 0.5 uh, for get from to the uh, add time that uh, zero to the time taken to the cross zero, minus 0. 0.2 just add to the half uh, 0. 0.5 to get the negative saturation negative saturation duration and uh, subtract from 0. 0.5 to get the positive saturation which is very clear from the figure why we are subtracting and adding
so this is dual last question is a dual slope line question so there is a uh, slope line and the delta v is the slope and everything is given and we know the equation and uh, we know that uh, here the frequency is 4 megahertz and uh, basically the time taken to count the uh, for counting single time one frequency time is needed or one time period is needed one clock cycle so for counting 2 to the power 16 how much time is required 2 to the power 16 into time period that is 2 to the power 16 into 1 by frequency that is nothing but 16.38 millisecond so the counter is required 16.38 millisecond to count from 0 to, to the 2 power 16 that much time is required okay so uh, when it reaches 2 to the power 16 the output is nothing but minus 10 okay the output is nothing but minus 10 so and slope we know minus 8 by rc is equal to 16.38 so 16.38 is the time taken by the counter to count from 0 to the 6, 2 power 16 time like 65538 up to that counting the counter will take that much milliseconds milliseconds it's 10 to the power 3 also there yeah so by that time the output voltage will be minus 10 so you can find the values of r c is given and that will be at 0 2.205 kilo, kilo ohms the second part of the question is nothing but uh, it is given uh, we are asked to find the or, uh, one particular voltage is given we are asked to find the uh, what counting will be there so i told that while reaching uh, 10 volt the counter will count up to 2 power 16 that's the idea so for counting uh, 4.2 volt just multiply that one 2 to the power 6 uh, no 10 volt for 2 to the power 16 so 2 to the power 16 by 10 for 1 volt so 2 to the power 16 by 10 into 4 point something uh, given for uh, count will be uh, counted by the counter when we uh, reaches that particular voltage so we'll get in the, in the decimal convert into the binary for getting that answer so thank you i hope everyone understood this one uh, so bye